Hey everybody, we're back. Um, wow, it has been, well, it's only been a few weeks, I guess. Maybe two or three. Um, so I'm in, I'm back in Nashua. And I, I didn't think I'd be saying that any anytime on this channel again. And recording a video. Um, I just wanted to talk about my travels. Uh, I've been, I meant to do this video back in Oklahoma. When I was like at the tail end of my travels. And I only had a few days left. But that was before the conference had happened. And also like before my travels were actually over and so it was a bit like a bit too early um and it ended up like a, a, the take ended up getting interrupted anyway so um this might be a little longer because i'm going to basically go over everything that happened on my travels not everything but i mean like a lot of things um and just how i feel about traveling in general like as a as a thing um so so i traveled from about i want to say october 7th to November 20th or something and sorry just checking my computer battery I should be good um, if I pause and come back then you'll know um, but anyway so yeah um, uh, from October 7th to about I want to say November 20th around there thereabouts um, probably actually the 16th I want to say 16th or 17th uh, Anyway, so I did all that because I was going to a lot of uh, Students for Liberty uh, Students for Liberty conference, and um, what those are, they're basically uh, conferences for libertarian students to gather and hold meetings and uh, you know have speakers and stuff like that. Um, one of the things that kind of annoys me about Student for Liberty conferences, and I like them, but this is just a critique I have of them is that um, it's too uh, too much of an echo chamber most of the time. A lot of people, like one of the one of the conferences had a talk uh, called The Moral Case for Capitalism. Um, and it was just so ridiculous. It was like, what libertarian really needs to be convinced that there's a moral case for capitalism? Um, even if they're not like a moralist, even if they're utilitarian or egoist or, or I mean, whatever, um, why would they need to be convinced that capitalism is a good thing? Like you're just, you're literally just preaching to the choir. Um, not in the sense that they're literally a church choir, but like th th this couldn't be any more of preaching to the choir. So that was an issue I had. Um, that ended up still being an interesting talk. Unfortunately, the speaker constantly conflated markets and capitalism and saying, well, look at all the great things that markets did, therefore capitalism is great. But um, I think, I think don't, don't think those things go actually together. Um, and I'll link a book in the description called Markets Not Capitalism that goes into that. Um, but anyway, so um, so I went to a lot of these Students for Liberty conferences uh, because I was tabling for the Center for a Stateless Society. Um, if you are watching my channel, you probably know what the Center for a Stateless Society is, but C4SS is a, a left-wing market anarchist think tank. We are free market anti-capitalists. We're individualist anarchists, mutualists, uh, in the tradition of Benjamin Tucker, Lysander Spooner, more contemporaneously, people like Kevin Carson and Roderick Long, um, you know, folks from the 60s like Konkin, uh, Samuel Edward Konkin III, who created agorism. Uh, some people call it agorism. I say agorism. Um, and, uh, and Carl Hess, of course, um, who's a Barry Goldwater speechwriter, but eventually turned into sort of a, a leftist libertarian. Um, so, yeah, so I was tabling for them, and I was basically the, the tabling really for the distro arm of the Center for Sale Society, um, which is the Alliance of the Libertarian Left, or ALL. Um, and yeah, I was tabling some uh, Market Anarchy series, some Volturine Declare stuff. Um, Volturine Declare is one of my favorite anarchists of all time. If you're watching my channel, you undoubtedly know who she is because she's the banner image of my uh, site. I have have several videos about her. So um, so yeah, um, my first stop, I left uh, Boston October 7th or, or thereabout, thereabouts to go to Philly. Now, the Student for Liberty conference was already canceled there because of um, lack of attendance, basically, uh, from what I hear, um, which, I mean, again, I like SFL, so I'm not saying this to, like, disparage them. Uh, it just kind of seemed like a general phenomenon this year that attendance was down, but there were also more conferences, so I don't know if that balanced out, um, and I th still think, even with less people, like, the conferences were still a lot of fun, so... To me, it didn't really make a big difference. I, I'm not using it like a big sticking point, I guess. Um, but anyway, so the one in Philly had already been canceled. I already found that out like a week before. But I'd already gotten my tickets. But luckily, they were like 
fifteen fifty or something. It was really cheap. I took like a bolt bus or something. Oh, by the way, I, when I traveled, I basically used buses the whole time. So, yeah, that was fun. Um, and so uh, I didn't do a test about how my voice sounds, but hopefully I sound okay. Um, anyway, so I got to Philly and uh, I met up with a anarchist historian friend of mine uh, for a bunch of days. And I also hung out with my friend Haley, and we went used bookstore shopping. And this is the exciting part of my video. I got to show you some used books that I got. These are not all of the books that I bought, and not all of them are used. Uh, I did go to a Barnes & Noble, and I went to a comic book shop. So, um, But uh, at a used bookstore, I got The Feminist Case Against Bureaucracy. Um, it's back in the 80s. But it basically says, like, you know, reduces liberal feminism to a heap of false promises, forces leftists towards feminism, to a degree unapproached by the, and it, then it puts it in quotes, Marxist feminist literature, which is just, that's fantastic. Um, and it, it's just, it's wonderful. Um, yeah, so Temple University Press, Philadelphia. Um, I got it from a House of Our Own, which is an awesome independent bookstore for independent thinkers. I did not have a great anarchist section, though, um, sadly. Um, I got this from a different store, uh, Last Word Bookshop. Sh book they uh, also good, but their anarchist section was even worse. Uh, why privacy isn't everything? Uh, feminist reflections on personal accountability. Now, personally, I think the feminist movement already has. Like, I consider myself a feminist, but I already think we have so many issues. Like, we should we really have titles like this? But, well, I got this: uh, Outlaws of America for eight ninety five. This whole thing, and it's the weather underground and the politics of solidarity. I am super stoked about this book. I may even write a review of it for C four S S. Super stoked. Uh, 1960s counterculture shit is like my my bread and butter. Um, it's one of my lesser like uh, special interests as someone with Asperger's special interests, whatever. Everybody has them, but because... Anyway, that's a tangent. Sorry. We'll, we'll get into that some other time. But it's super exciting. This is normally 20 bucks, 15, dollar, 15 euros or whatever, uh, and, uh, but it's 8.95 at the last word or whatever it was. Um, it just so happens, um, I got this at um, Barnes and Noble. It was seventeen ninety five, but I was so taken by the artwork, which you might be able to say. I'll try not to um, show too much of it, you know, my, my copyright. But, but I mean, just I mean, I don't know how well you can see that, but it's it's beautiful artwork, and um, it's basically about this this uh, it's a it's a culture clash um, book, basically. Uh, Lumberjanes, Volume 2. Uh, this is a great uh, graphic novel. I have not read Volume 2, but I've read Volume 1. It's about, like, young girls, um, uh, basically, like, uh, it's basically, like, uh, can't, you know, um, Girl Scouts, and but with, like, monsters and stuff like that. And there's lots of queerness going on in this book, so that's pretty rad. Uh, I got Saga, Volume 5. If you know comics at all, you should be reading Saga. It is like Star Wars plus uh, Lord of the Rings, I think I've heard as a description, and it is just incredible. Um, lastly, and this is not the only book that I got. This is not the last book I got. I got a few other books too, but um, Rat Queens, uh, Volume 2. This is an excellent book about um, just a, a group of female um, females who are basically like mercenaries, and they're just, it's very funny. Very colorful. I mean, I just highly recommend it. Um, so yeah, so that's a lot of what I got. Um, my budget kind of suffered from all the books I bought. Um, I <clears throat> bought about 65... So me and my friend Haley went to like uh, six different used bookstores, uh, including the Wooden Shoe bookstore, um, where I got a few pamphlets that I'm not going to show um, just because I didn't remember to bring them in. Um, but um, but Wooden, Wooden Shoe is great. Uh, I really recommend it. They're in Philadelphia. Um, you can look them up. Um, I got this other great book. Uh, I'm not going to get it out, but it's uh, uh, Prison Memoirs of an Anarchist by Alexander Berkman. Uh, Voltaire and Claire actually helped him write it. Um, but anyway, among the used bookstores, I basically spent about 65 bucks in total, which isn't bad. For all the books that I got, that's really not bad. Um, sorry for the reflection of my glasses. I can only do so much. Um, and then Barnes & Noble was um, 35 bucks. I basically spent... <coughs> <coughs> 100 bucks in total. Sorry. <coughs> I'm still getting over a cold, so excuse me. Um, <coughs> I'm good. Um, so anyway, so that was Philly. 
Um, my friend Robert Helms, uh, who's an anarchist historian, um, basically gave me a big anarchist history lesson, and that was fantastic. Um, besides that, um, I didn't really hang out with too many people in Philly, um, but I got some work writing projects done. And Oh, I, I watched this movie called... Um, oh, I can't remember. It's a French film, and it was really popular in the 80, uh, 90s. Oh, uh, Emily, or something like that. I'm sorry, I'm bad with accents. Uh, but Emily, it was okay. I thought it was wildly overrated, but it was it was nice. Eh, maybe watch it once. Um, so Philly was great, um, great, great. Um, and then I went back to Boston for the Boston SFL. Um, I don't know how to politely say it, but I guess I guess there were some promotional issues, or I don't know what. But it was really not well attended. Um, it was still a good event. I had fun. Uh, it wasn't much effort for me to go there. I saw a good friend. I saw some other cool people. Uh, there were a few cool talks. There was actually this one really funny moment where somebody from the Coke Industries was giving a talk about uh, how our foreign policy is so messed up, which is like one of the few things I'd probably agree with from somebody from the Coke Industries, but hey, there you go. Uh, and someone from the audience who I knew identified as a conservatarian, literally identified like that, was like, well, you know, I don't see anything wrong with like having you know, strong military or whatever, like putting like Navy ships o around Russia. I, I was, I was a little dumbfounded, but, but the, the Coke Industries guy has clearly dealt with people like this before, I'm sure. So he was well prepared. He's like, well, you know, I see what you're saying, but it would be tough for somebody to not see that as an act of war. And, you know, flexing your military might is just not a good idea. So I was like, so my knee jerk reaction was, wow, I agree with the Coke Industries guy. And I'm like, Ugh, that's weird. But it was, a, it was a good presentation. And um, there was another good talk by someone from Reason. I don't remember her name. But she was, she was good. And I, um, I, uh, <laughs> she had a talk that was basically kind of like Walter Block's In Defense of the Defendable. Uh, in Defense of, of the Undefendable. And hers was like Defending the Undefendable. Or in def I, in the Indefensible. Sorry. Lots of similar words going on here. Anyway, uh, it was good. She basically bashed voting, recycling, and something else. I don't remember the other thing, but I agreed with her in voting. I wasn't sure about recycling, and I don't remember the other thing. Uh, but it was a good talk and a good Q and A. Um, so, so the the event was good. Um, this weird thing that kept happening during the events was that um, ALL would basically make fifteen bucks regardless of how many people went. Now, the one exception to this was Oklahoma, because but we'll get to Oklahoma in a bit. This is going to be a long video, because I'm just going all throughout my travels. Um, after Boston, I stuck around in Boston for a bit. Um, I think I went back to New Hampshire very shortly, just to get myself ready for um, for the rest of my trip. And uh, after that, I set off for Ohio. Ohio was the longest leg of my trip, easily. Um, I had made a miscalculation with a friend of mine. I thought he was going to be able to hold me for... Uh, had me in his place for about 11 days, and that ended up not being the case. So I had to rush to figure out how, and the day before I think I canceled, or I was going to cancel my, I was already starting to make plans to just come back to Mass. Um, a friend of a friend of a friend um, said, you can stay here for 11 days, and I won't even charge you anything. And uh, it worked out. It was beautiful. Um he was an awesome person, and thank you so much to Daniel for just being great and awesome. Um, my other friends, uh, Sam and uh, Connor uh, especially, were really, really helpful, so thank you to them. I've already sent thank yous to them, but um, anyway. Um, so yeah, so I just uh, stuck around there, and I went to the Ohio Conference, which was much better. It had about an attendance of, I want to say, 60 or 70 people, which I guess was still pretty low, but for me, which was it was great. Um, and had some great conversations, met a few friends, uh, made a few friends, rather, uh, and also met a few friends, so, you know, worked out both ways. Um, yeah, um, uh, again, I was still busting and traveling. We'll, we'll get to that in a little bit, I think. But, um, yeah, Ohio was great. Um, it, uh, the, the conference was great. Um, when I was staying at Daniel's uh, in Ohio, he... Um, I basically just stayed there, and he went to his job or whatever, and he was like a graduate student or something, and he um, he went to or the sorry, uh, I um, went to like great lengths to just get a lot of stuff done. So I basically finished my uh, 
Political, uh, Problem of Political Authority Review, which is a book by Michael Humer, who's an anarcho-capitalist, and just use it as an excuse to review anarcho-capitalism. Um, so, yeah, it's like 20,000 words. You can find it on C4SS. I'll link in the description if I remember to. Uh, super long. I'd recommend really taking your time with it, maybe reading a part a day or something. I worked really hard on it. I worked on it for about a month, and it's you know almost 20,000 words. I think it's actually a little over 20,000 words, so it's cr crazy. It's definitely one of the longest things I've, I've re written in a long time. <laughs> Maybe read in a long time. No, that's not true. Um, yeah, so I mean, that could be a pan that could easily be a very long pamphlet in of itself, if not, um, no, probably not a book, but it could be definitely like a long pamphlet by itself. Um, so yeah, um, Ohio was really good. Oh, I, I got into a few interesting things happened along the way. <laughs> um, sounds like a title to a, a sitcom or something. Um, I got into Bob's Burgers, which was awesome, and then I also watched iZombie. Um, both are great shows that I really recommend. Um, so yeah, so that was cool. Um, hanging out with everybody was cool. Um, it definitely made me appreciate Ohio had... I hung around a lot with people who um, in, indulge in certain substance, substances, and it made me sort of appreciate being straight edge. I mean, I don't think there's anything morally wrong with it. But aesthetically, you know, it, it gets a little um, it gets a little tiring to, to to keep hanging out with like people who are like indulging in things you're not indulging in. Like just as a general principle, right? Like um, whether it's alcohol or anything else. Um, so you know, it just it just gets annoying after a while. But it wasn't a big deal. It was just something I noted, and it's just you know, it's for me, it's so much more fun on a consistent basis to like hang out with straight edge people or people who like at least, like, aren't totally into, um, you know, s illicit substances or substances that um, affect your brain, I guess. Um, and, I don't, again, I don't have any moral or ethical stance against it. I just, it's just aesthetics, right? Um, so, anyway, no offense to anybody. <laughs> I hope I don't get in trouble for those comments, but, uh, oh, well. Um, just my opinion. I don't, I don't judge anybody for it, but uh, it, does, it does get annoying on a personal level. It's just not my preference to to hang around with, with people who do it a lot, I guess is what I'm saying. And even then, like, I'm I'm a pretty tolerant guy. It doesn't matter. It doesn't bug me a lot, but it matters enough to be mentioned, I guess. So, yeah, um, and then from Ohio, I went to um, Cleveland, uh, well, Cleveland, Ohio, um, with a few friends, uh, Sam and Connor and a few other people, and uh, we all hung out at Connor's house. I did this incredibly aspy thing where I rolled around on a, on a carpet um, downstairs in the basement went around a lot of people because it just felt so nice. This is totally an Asperger's thing to do. But I warned everybody. And one of my friends, uh, Brendan, he was like, you know, Nick, you're, you're acting like a cat. I was like, I was going for a dog, but that'll do. So um, it was a good time. And then we went to the Michigan conference, and that was great. I mean, this is when things really started getting good. Um, 70 or 80 people, um, probably. Um, uh, I saw my friend Dylan. That was awesome. I Dylan is just such a good guy and such a good friend, and um, I'm really fortunate to have him as a friend. He's always been really supportive, and he's a really smart guy. I can't, I, I can't say enough good things about Dylan. Um, but it, we only hung out for a few days, sadly. But um, but it was really cool, and it was so good to catch up with him. And he's he's straight edge, so this is kind of where my comparison comes from. It was just kind of like we were always able to talk. And um, it was just really nice. Um, and I didn't do too many things there. I did read about public choice theory, which was very interesting. I won't go into that in this video, but it was, it was very interesting. Public choice theory is one of the few economics fields that slightly interests me, um, which I have to uh, thank Nathan Goodman for. Um, uh, wow, we're almost at 20 minutes. Damn. Um, so Michigan conference was great. Um, I actually did a, I wish someone had recorded it, but I don't think anybody did, did like a like a minute introduction to C4SS because uh, during the networking thing, they wanted people to talk about what C4SS was. And yeah, so I did that like off the cuff and people thought it was fine. So that was good. Um, someone from Reason, uh, Sheikah Dalmia. I, I, I'm so sorry. I'm probably mispronouncing her name. But she um, had a great talk about open borders and why libertarians should support them. Now, she's actually a minarchist, which confuses the hell out of me how you can rectify, reconcile minarchism and open borders. But, but I, it was great. I mean, I'm so glad she had that talk. Um, so I hope it gets put up online, and it was terrific. 
Um, reception was really good. I got in a few silly conversations. As, <coughs> as the number of people sort of increased, my chances of getting in silly conversations with people increased. So, like, I had a conversation with somebody about... Um, I even had this with Facebook status, but they were, I was like, well, so we're anti-capitalist. And they're like, oh, what does that mean? And I'm like, well, here is what it means, da-da-da. It's like, oh, well, that's not really capitalism because, like, I see capitalism as this. And I'm like, okay, but that's historically, like, that's that's the system that's existed and it's been called capitalism. Most people identify as cap. I mean, doesn't, that doesn't inherently make it right, but, I mean, I, I think it fits. I mean, capitalism is the system that is designed to benefit those with the most capital, right? I mean, I don't even think, I don't even think some anarcho-capitalists or cap state capitalists would disagree with that. Um, I think that's a mistake, personally, because I don't think a certain factor of production, whether it's labor, capital, land, whatever, should be singled out and privileged above all others. Um, so, but anyway, it was just a silly conversation. I, I did, wasn't mad about it, per se, but I just was so annoyed. Um... Yeah, not angry, just kind of, like, vaguely annoyed. Like, what a silly rejoinder. Like, okay, that's not the real definition. Okay, well, we can just agree to disagree, and we can talk about something more substantive. I'm not even a big fan of the capitalism versus non-capitalism debate or whatever. You know, Look at look at Roderick Long's Zaxelback's argument, um, if you want to really know what my opinion comes down to. Um, but it was, yeah, like I said, it was really great. We basically, again, even though increased audience basically only sold like 15 bucks. Uh, one of the funny things about all these conferences is that libertarians are all about the price system and stuff like that. I made a little sneer about this, uh, jokingly sneering, uh, during my C4SS intro to it. But I was like, you know, C4SS, like we're allegedly a bunch of commies, according to some people here. Yeah, I didn't say exactly like this, but... I said, isn't it funny that, like, we're the only people, like, using the price mechanism and all y'all are, like, using, like, you know, um, use, you know, giving stuff away for free, which is, like, everybody from the Coke Industries to, like, the Heritage Foundation or whatever was giving shit away for free. And we were, like, we had pamphlets for sale and this or that. Um, so, yeah, so it, it was funny. It's just a little funny thing, and I don't, I don't think it actually means anything, but I think it's funny. Um, it's really, honestly, honestly, because I need to recoup costs. And I can't afford, like the Coke Industries can for, for, it's not the Coke Industries, it's the Charles Coke Industry, uh, Institute, excuse me. So it's not the Coke Industries per se, but offshoot of them. Anyway, if, using them as an example, I, you know, they have all their costs well met, I'm sure. I, I'm, I'm, it, it, sounds, it seems pretty plausible to me. Um, but I don't, and I need to recoup costs for later tabling and stuff. <coughs> so, um... So yeah, um, it was kind of a funny thing. Um, and then from Michigan, oh, I had a long trip to Oklahoma. I guess this is where I'll talk about traveling, per se. I don't enjoy traveling. Um, I, cause, as I've mentioned a few times, I have Asperger's. I like routine. I like structure. You don't have that when you're traveling, and you're always on the go. And I don't mind a little bit of traveling. But this was near constant traveling on a weekly basis, if not less. You know, I got lucky if I was somewhere for a week. Like, that 11 days in Ohio was fantastic for me. I mean, it did get a little boring towards the end, but and a little lonely. But at the other, on the other hand, I was just so glad to finally have a routine and just constantly be working on stuff. Like, I've I've done so much on AbolishWork.com, like, the, the nice blog, I know, um, this, this month. You know, I've done almost, tw I think I've done 20 posts of original content, um, which is amazing. I mean, that's fantastic, I think. It's about 20,000 words for free, you know? I don't really think, like, you know, many writers release their content on such a consistent basis. But, you know, if you want to donate to my Patreon, you can help that happen more. Bam. Plug. Double plug. Um, anyway, the trip to, from Michigan to Oklahoma was awful. Not least of which because I almost missed the bus because I couldn't even find the bus station. But I relied on a police officer at one point, which I'm not proud about. But, you know, I was, I was desperate. And I'm like, you know what? He's probably not going to kick my ass just for asking for directions. He could have. He didn't, thankfully. Um, so he, sh he, he helped me get there a little bit. He didn't walk me there. But he, he gave me basic directions. And I figured it out through him and through a few other people. And it's just, it was a small, like, thing on the wall, like, under a parking garage or around a parking garage. Anyway, I, I got there. I have Russell's leg syndrome, so that also makes... The traveling not so fun but i have this like uh balance disc that um that really helps me it's like a cushion or whatever and it's made out of rubber um but i don't know i just don't like the traveling i don't like the journey i like the destination but the journey is just terrible and i couldn't fly anywhere this is the thing 
I had a bag, like a luggage bag full of anarchist pamphlets and also like $100 in loose change and like dollar bills. Like how am I explaining that to a TSA agent? I couldn't. So, and also usually buses were cheaper. So it just made more economic sense. This wasn't always true. And sometimes it wasn't true to the extent that that if I really liked flying, which I don't even like flying anyway, and I don't like the TSA, and I, it just was bad circumstances with what I was carrying. Um, even if all that wasn't true, uh, usually it wasn't a big enough difference to really make flying worth it. Um, it was just a time difference, honestly. And I was usually willing to bite the bullet on time if that meant that I spent less money. So, so you know, I'm totally willing to say, hey, it was my fault that I suffered in the way I did, I guess, to put it like extremely like that. Um, so checking the battery again, I should be fine. Um, so yeah, so I got to Oklahoma. I mean, Oklahoma was really great. I, I saw so many cool people. Um, so many cool people. Uh, I, I don't even know where to start. Um, it, it was frustrating, honestly, because I, at that point I wanted to go back home. I was missing somebody uh, at the time and I really just wanted to go back home. Which was funny because I was having such a good time there too. So I felt kind of shitty about myself because um, I'm like, I should be having a more fun time. But, you know, I, I really missed somebody and I really missed uh, just being home and having these, you know, usual circumstances. So it, it was it was a conflict, but it wasn't a big conflict. I don't regret going to Oklahoma, God no. But, um, but I got it figured out the last second and transportation costs were expensive. But... Um, so from like Tuesday to Friday, not much happened, but I did get a few writing projects done here and there and some other things. And, um, Friday was this big left libertarian social at somebody's house. And that was amazing. I saw a lot of cool people from C4SS and a lot of cool people I just had never met. Uh, the conference, I mean, oh, it was so good. Uh, exploring anarchism, uh, Jason Lee Bias and Cooper Williams were like the organizers behind it. Like super kudos to you guys, to, to y'all. To, this is the great thing about going to Oklahoma. It normalized y'all to me, which is great because y'all is is a gender neutral way of saying you guys. Which I, I try not to say anymore because I I just think you guys like guys is typically male, and I don't know. It, it's just a uh, I don't impose that on other people. Uh, that's a me thing, and like I see why other people would try to be more pressing about it, but I don't do that personally. So, but I think y'all is superior to you guys. So I don't know if that's any consolation. Anyway, it was it was awesome. There were so many cool people. I don't even know. Nathan Nathan Goodman had like a ten minute speech on prison abolition, and it just it just took my breath away. It was it was so incredible. Charles Johnson had a great talk on direct action. Roger Long had a great talk about market anarchism as a form of constitutionalism. Um, there's a talk on open borders. I'm actually thinking about organizing an open borders talk in New Hampshire or, or conference in New Hampshire or Boston. Um, Maybe both? I don't think so, though. One, one or the other, probably. Um, and, yeah, um, now that I'm settled in New Hampshire, I'm generally trying to organize lots of stuff here. Um, so, yeah, Oklahoma was amazing. I mean, I just, man. And the ALL table is the best I've ever seen it. We had a um, we had an awesome banner and stuff like that. And just, there's just so many cool people. I had so many cool experiences. It's, it's so hard to even talk about it coherently, <laughs> clearly. Um, but I met so many cool people, and I just, you know, it was just so great, you know. I think Oklahoma's, besides New Hampshire, Oklahoma's the only place I think I'd ever feel really at home, in some sense. I, I never really feel at home anywhere, but, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how much money, honestly, we made at the Oklahoma conference, but it was more than 15, I'll tell you that. Um, we had such a good selection, we had a lot of freebies. Oklahoma to Boston, <sighs> Uh, that was my next trip, and boy, it was just, it was, it was long, and it really reaffirmed, that was me, that was on my last legs, but I got to the Boston Anarchist Book Fair, I was really nervous about it, because we had only had a few months to organize it, but it went fine, and honestly, I mean, some of the speakers canceled, and, but almost all the tablers showed up, and they all seemed to have a good time, um, being the organizer again for the second year in a row is great, working with people is great, um, I don't know how, again, I don't know how much ALL got, but it was more than 15, I think. And it, it was great. It was a great time. Um, I didn't have a talk on Abolish Work, so that's not going to be a thing. But I'm, I'm producing so much content that I don't think it really matters. Um, I am going to work on the book review soon. Um, and um, I just have a hard time balancing, because I want to keep doing the op-eds, but I also want to do the book reviews. So I'm trying to 
I got to figure out how to balance that. But but Stalin's peasants is going to be next. Basically, a look at how people who lived under Stalin rebelled by um, not working. So that's it. Um, I'm just at about 30 minutes, which is longer than I thought I would. But yeah, I mean, traveling, it was good for me, but it didn't really solve my issues. And when I came back in recent days, my issues have actually exploded and um, I got sick and um, I've been struggling with depression at an all time high. So um, I'm, I'm a little better now. Obviously, I wouldn't be able to do this video if I wasn't, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm still really doing rough, and uh, my issues kind of just exploded when I came back, which I'm glad they exploded now than while I was traveling, um, I guess, as a consolation, but I'll get through it, and um, I'll be better. Um, I think I'll just use this as a learning experience and go from there, so no, it sounds cheesy, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to do that anyway. So uh, thanks for listening. Um, I, there's so many people I want to thank and mention, and, and there's so much to even talk about that I can't capture within even an hour probably, but I think a half an hour is good enough, and I should really be getting to go, uh, really be getting, I should really go to sleep soon is what I'm trying to say. See? Point proven. So thank you so much. Um, if you want, if you like this video, if you like my work on Abolish Work, please uh, consider making a $5 monthly donation, donation to Patreon. Uh, my Patreon account will be the first link in the description. Um, I think that's it. I don't know when I'll do a video again. Uh, maybe I'll do a, um, a poem or something like that, but I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Um, let's not get carried away. Uh, says the guy who just did a 30-minute.